Welcome back to our next session with 10 Minutes with Trey on Thursday. Today we're going to be talking about the keys to change. Um, the purpose statement of the Grove is being changed by God to reach all people. Uh, change is something that God wants to, He wants to change us continually. Starting with Jesus Christ and Him dying on the cross for our sins, that changes us. But He's continuing to do a change in our lives. And I think we would all agree there's a lot that needs to change in our country. With the racial unrest, in the midst of COVID and everything that happened there, I think, I think we're in a process right now where we're trying to figure out what needs to change and how does that change happen. So where do we begin? It's really complicated and really messy and everybody wants something different. So when we're really looking at change, it's important to step back and realize that you know, God is the best initiator of change. And if we look to Him, uh, he, he always wants to shape us to be more like Him. And the more that we let that drive our change, the better that it's going to be. I agree. And as much as we want um, change to happen in our society, uh, the best place for that to start is change within our own hearts. Um, so when we start looking at change, change is really important to evaluate, really important to look at. And we have to start inside of ourselves. Um, we hear a lot about um, we need this movement, uh, but movements die out unless they're driven by individuals' passions. And so the way to do that is to work on changing our own hearts. When we look at ourselves as that agent of change, um, then what changes in us then spreads. And the better we are at it, the, the more it'll spread like a wildfire and really take root in things. It's also important to remember that change is a process. Um, we need to let it be a process. As much as we want it to happen now, uh, we need to give ourselves and each other room to let it happen over time. Because we can change an action right now, but if we want that to stay changed, we need to change our heart that drives our actions. And that'll be a big difference. Um, it also, change requires self-evaluation. Uh, and self-evaluation is hard. We have to look at ourselves and we're looking for things that we don't like, well, who wants to go digging for things we don't like in ourselves? Sure. Um, but the process of that is really important. And the more we look to God to guide that in us, um, the better off we're gonna be in getting that awareness. Yeah, that's kind of a little bit, I think we talked about it at one point, maybe it was even on the discussion of race and faith that so quickly we just wanna fix something, mm -hmm. but we also need to feel it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why even the way we talked about this all last week was, okay, let's listen, let's lament and learn. Um, and just the lamenting, the mourning aspect of feeling what's going on, because that's even going to create something in us to bring about change. Um, Definitely. And it's interesting looking back to like the COVID season. I mean, we really talked about this a lot about like, you know, just the pausing and the stopping and the being still and knowing that I'm God. I mean, you talked us through that verse and, um, that's a discipline to actually stop and, like you said, especially if it's a work that's not fun to do, like stopping and evaluating myself and the sins that are in my heart and um, bringing those before the Lord, it's a discipline. And it's not necessarily easy, like you said, but we have to be mindful to actually stop and slow down. Absolutely. And as we're working on ourselves and letting God work in us, we'll see God differently. Uh, you know, change gives us a different perspective on God. And the more we can spend time in God's Word, the more He'll bring about how it applies to whatever our current struggle is. So that, that core part of change, it's important to really kind of center that and let God have input in it and let it change how we see God. That's an important aspect of things. So, and then the other thing is that change requires preparation. Um, we don't often think about getting ready for change being a part of change. But, I'm sorry. That's all right. All right. <laughs> change takes preparation. We really don't often think about change in a way that getting ready to change and thinking about change is part of the change. Um, but we have to, uh, because that's really where our motivation to change gets cemented. We have to decide that we really want to change, and that's what's going to allow us and give us the energy to change. Yeah, I like that. 
I mean, it reminds me of uh, Proverbs 4, where uh, Solomon's even talking about wisdom. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. You want wisdom? Well, you have to know that you need wisdom. So it's kind of like that. You want change? You have to know, okay, I'm going to prepare to get changed. I'm going to get changed. Yeah. So, yeah, Definitely. Throwing that out there, Trey. Love that. That's great. <laughs> Thanks. And then we also have to be intentional and kind of plan change. Um, if you just kind of go willy-nilly with change, then you never know where you're going to be going. Um, but the more that you plan, the more you're going to be able to shape where you want it to go. Yeah. So a lot of times we'll think, well, I know we need to change, but unless we sit down and give ourselves some benchmarks that we can see, then we're going to miss uh, where we're trying to get. Sure. So by being able to work that out, that's really important. Just like you're going on a diet. you got to plan out your meals, food prep, prepare. Absolutely. Throwing out all kinds of illustrations. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And allowing yourself to practice. Practice is part of change. Um, if you jump straight to needing to be there, then you're not going to be successful. You know, practice. Realize that I'm going to work on it, and I may not always be exactly where I want to be, and the next day I'm going to get up and practice some more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not letting those setbacks completely derail the progress you have made. I feel like that's part of it, too, is getting discouraged. Like, oh, I failed again, and not trying the next day, not getting up with that same mindset of like, okay, I failed, but I also have been making progress. So evaluating, looking at that, and let that be the thing that motivates you to keep going. So when we're thinking about this intentionality, um, we want to also have some accountability. Um, you don't want to decide to change and not tell anybody, because then there's no accountability in it. But if you kind of like dieting also, you know, if you tell people you are, then they're going to have some accountability. Sure. Um, so finding that accountability is really an important aspect. It reminds me of this one time Daniel got us to sign up for a half marathon. <laughs> He's telling the whole church, like, not the whole church, but like a lot of our friends, like, hey, we're going to do this for World Vision. And so then I started telling people and started training. And then, did you run it? How did it no, go? Stop, you know. <laughs> so all our friends ran it. And I it. So we still give him a hard time. Like, hey, remember that time you got us to sign up and then you didn't do it? Hey, I brought change in others. <laughs> you did. So sometimes maybe your gifting is to be the motivator of others. Uh, no. Ask the next question. <laughs> Ask the next question. You can think of an example of where I failed or something. You're perfect. Um, <laughs> so what are some of the, the biggest things that get in the way of change? The biggest obstacle to change is fear. Uh, and, and we've talked about fear a lot in here, but not really in that context of a barrier to change. Uh, but what it is, is there are a lot of fears. The fear of the unknown is huge. You know, when you're making change, you don't know what it's going to end up like. And that's scary. Uh, there's also fear of failure, not wanting to try and not get there. Yeah. We have some friends who I know in the midst of all the discussions, even on race, it pushed them to get to know some of their neighbors um, that were African-American that lived further down the street. Mm -hmm. and went over and brought dessert and just said hello and introduced himself. And I think there was, there was a, bit, a bit of fear in that of like, well, what am I going to do? Just going to go over there and say hi? Sure. Well, yes, exactly what we're going to do and begin to form relationships and be welcoming. And it was something they wanted to do. And I know they were nervous, but they did it. Mm -hmm. It was a starting point. Yeah. So. Which is good. And sometimes we fear success. Um, sometimes because we don't know what it'll look like, but sometimes because we think there's extra pressure that comes with it. And, you know, how are we going to maintain that? Yeah. It's, so success can be scary. Um, one of the big fears, too, can be that you're not important or that you'll lose your importance. A lot of times people struggle with not feeling good enough to begin with, so then they don't want to do things that uh, might reinforce that belief. You know, mm. We know it's not true, but that doesn't mean they're not believing it. And that fear of losing relationships is, is big, too, with change. That when you change, some of your relationships may be at risk. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not worth changing anyway. Yeah, and I felt that tension even in becoming a believer. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, like going back to that first point of when God changed me, changed my heart, all of a sudden my relationships around me were changing because he was surrounding me with people who needed to push me towards you know, the prize in getting to know Jesus more. And that wasn't popular, <laughs> you know, so Maybe sometimes. Maybe a little intimidating. And yeah, yeah, very intimidating, especially when you're stepping into Christian circles where you're the one who knows the least about the Bible. So even that can be a, a hard change with that. And I don't know, so yeah, I relate to that. Yeah. 
Impatience is also something that gets in the way of change. We want it, we want it right now. Yeah. And if we can't have it right now, then it's not worth the effort of lasting change. One of the hard things to remember is that change doesn't happen in the crisis. Change happens in the calm after the storm. Um, you may do things different, but that heart change and that changing the way things are that will stick with you the rest of your life happens in that calm after the storm. So it's important to think about. Another big barrier is the lack of support and role models when we're thinking about it. When we're wanting something that we've never seen, it's harder to get it. So finding role models, finding people who can, you know, be that example and stick with it with you will help. You know, even like there may be a lot of changes in COVID after the whole COVID thing that people are looking at, I need to find better balance between work and home. And so if you're looking to continue that better balance, but you don't know anyone who has good balance in that, it's going to be really hard. Um, so to continue that, you want to find people that are in that with you and that you can look up to with that and watch and see that balance and talk to about that balance. Yeah. Next. Sorry, kids are looking at us through the window. Five more minutes. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so what do we need to watch out for during this process? It's really important to monitor and watch out for what you're telling yourself. Uh, we call that self-talk in counseling. But what you tell yourself really does have a huge impact on you. So if you're mean to yourself every time that you fail, you're less likely to have energy to restart and try again. Um, that kind of leads into the don't beat yourself up, but that you can't get the, go there without saying don't beat others up either. Um, social media has been brutal lately. Yeah, it really has. Um, people have been beating each other up like crazy. Mm -hmm. So you. Sorry. So Trey, what what do we need to watch out for during this process? What you say to yourself in your head, I think, is huge. Um, it we don't give it enough weight to how we kind of beat ourselves up, uh, and really kind of make ourselves give up even sometimes from that. And you know, so don't beat yourself up. But then also, looking at social media lately, don't beat each other up. That's huge. People have been brutal on social media. They have media. not been kind. Yeah, it has not been good. And when you're doing that, it's not going to bring about change. Um, hurting people isn't going to make people change. And so when you hurt others, we're really doing what we're fighting against, aren't we? You know, it, it breaks unity. It doesn't make progress in what we want with that unity. And so we have to watch out for that. Um, good intentions don't make it okay to treat each other poorly. Hmm. Uh, you can't do that on the way because that's not going to bring about change. It's only going to bring about division. further division. Yeah, absolutely. And then my final caution is remember people are different. Um, we're looking for unity, not sameness. Uh, and those are two very drastically different things. Yeah, I talked a little bit about that this weekend. Yeah. Unity doesn't mean you completely agree on everything. That's unity right. is the bond that we have in Jesus Christ. Definitely. And it is a fight. You have to fight, fight to stay unified. Yeah. Absolutely. And we have to remember that we can love someone that we don't agree with. Right. Mm -hmm. And we need to get good at that. Because uh, we we're not going to make everyone think like us. Everybody comes from a different place with a different set of experiences. Mm -hmm. And so then you come to different conclusions. And that's okay. That's your story. Uh, that's how you look at things. We need to be open to evaluate that and bring in more information and look at things bigger. But that doesn't mean that we're going to always get to the same decision. And that same conclusion is not what drives love. Love is driven by our value of each other. And value is non-negotiable, but opinions are negotiable. Yeah. So. And then kind of a last thing is I wanted to give a little kind of teaser for uh, the sermon. Um, this weekend? This weekend. The All one right. coming up. All right. Sounds good. It's going to be a great Spo sermon. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So as you're getting ready for it, uh, what I want you to do is think about our current situation is really not easy. It's not a simple thing to do. Uh, so remember that sometimes we limp away from things that bring us face to face with God. And So think about that as we're prepping. Listen for that in Daniel's sermon. I think it's going to be a great sermon. Well, I hope, I hope so. Uh, yeah, this, this weekend we started a new series at The Grove called Rethink. What has COVID caused us to rethink? And really, everything that's going on in our country right now, what is that causing us to rethink? And we come to God's Word, we come to Him, because we know that real change starts with Him. 
So I hope that you join us online this weekend. Thanks a lot, Trey. Thank you, Trey. Thank you my dear. And uh, God bless you guys.